Hello and welcome to Codex Lee. My name is Lee and this is a channel about books. So my two most recent videos were a little more structured, kind of longer form book reviews. Uh, this video is going to be a little more conversational. I'm just going to reflect back on the books I've read so far this year because I realised that I haven't actually done a wrap up for quite some time. So I thought that I would talk to you guys about the books that I've read in January and February of this year. So I've read nine books uh, in 2020 so far. Now two of the books uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, I've already done um, lengthy video reviews on them, so I will link to those uh, reviews in the description box down below. So the first thing I read this year wasn't actually a book, it was a magazine, uh, and this is Delayed Gratification magazine. Now I did an entire video where I talked about delayed gratification and slow journalism. Um, I'll put a card up there uh, for that if you want to watch it. Um, not many people did, I don't think many people are interested in this topic, but um, I really enjoy reading Delayed Gratification. Um, uh, I have a copy here. Um, there it is. It's got a cool cover with a little shark in a teacup. And there were some fascinating pieces in this. The piece that I found really fascinating um, was Inside the World's Most Controversial Company. What's daily life like at Huawei, the Chinese tech company facing the world's ire? Uh, and this was so interesting because they have they had all these um, pictures of the Huawei campus in China, uh, which is incredible. Like that that's the Huawei campus. They they kind of designed it after all these um, European cities. That's you know that's a tech company's campus. It's, it's amazing, and they have like their own subway system because the place is so huge. I thought that was really you know fascinating. Next up, I read um, Measure What Matters by John Doa. Doa. Uh, this was a bit of an odd one, really. Um, so John Doerr was a guy who, I don't know if he invented or he certainly popularised this notion of um, OKRs, which is a way of measuring how you are performing as a company. Um, they're basically like KPIs, if you know what a KPI is, a KP, uh, key performance indicator. Um, it's, it's not a particularly complicated concept, but he emphasises, you know, how you should choose what you should measure and how what you should measure should be kind of fairly simple. You should be able to describe it easily. You should be measuring it often. You should be uh, very transparent with other employees in the company about what you're measuring. Most of the book really focuses on, it's kind of like personal anecdotes of his about working with, you know, big modern tech companies like Google. Um, he presented to Google in their kind of early days, really, back in the late 90s, uh, and they adopted his his methodology of using these these OKRs. So I guess if you're interested in, like, anecdotes about these big tech companies in the early days, so, for example, like if you if you enjoyed reading the um, Steve Jobs biography, uh, which I did, I really liked that, then, then you'll enjoy this. Um, but if you want uh, a business book that, that teaches you a lot about um, ways of measuring performance, measuring growth. Um, this doesn't actually give you a huge amount of detail on that. This is probably not the best book to turn to. Uh, I gave it three stars. It was kind of okay. I just felt like there was maybe a hundred pages worth of material that was dragged out over, I think about 300 pages. Next, I read uh, Let the Right One In by Jan Avide Lindvist. Um, I, did a, I did an entire book review of this um, on my on my channel and I'll put the card to that up above so you can watch it if you want but in a nutshell this is definitely the best vampire book that I've read and probably the best horror novel I have ever read. Uh, it was superb, I really enjoyed it, I thought the characters were brilliant, I thought the pacing of the thing was brilliant, the setting was um, so detailed and evocative of, of, of kind of places I've lived in um, what I'm familiar with, uh, and the vampire itself um, was, on the one hand, an enigma, but on the other hand, very personable. You know, you you really knew this person and cared for this person despite what they are. Um, it's a, it's a really brilliant 
Vampire Tale and I highly recommend it and in parts it is also very sinister, very grotesque. It's just a great horror novel. Then I read Dune. Uh, this is another book I did a video review of. I'll put the card for that up there. Dune is also brilliant um, but also comes with baggage. Uh, baggage in the sense that this is probably the most famous sci-fi novel ever published. Um, if you know anything about sci-fi, you've probably heard of Dune, even if you don't know the specifics of the plot. Um, there was a very famous film version done in the 80s by David Lynch. There was a TV uh, movie version that came out, I think, in the early 2000s, and there is a new version of this coming out uh, that's supposed to come out at the end of, of this year of 2020, which I'm really looking forward to. Dune, as I said in the in the video review, in a way the outlines of the plot are very familiar to us now. This idea of this this hero um, who sort of discovers himself and has to work with these outcasts in order to reclaim his heritage, if you like, um, and begins to discover that he has these mysterious powers. Um, you know, we've seen this in so many um, movies. Um, you know, a lot of people say that. The definitive film version of Dune is is actually Star Wars, um, particularly A New Hope, because it it follows the um, the broad outlines of Dune um, in so many ways. But Dune goes to places that Star Wars doesn't. Uh, it is it's fascinated, if not obsessed, with um, ecology and how ecology and ecological constraints shape societies. Uh, and that is really interesting. Uh, it's really interested in the power dynamics involved in uh, within these certain societies, particularly in the um, more kind of aristocratic levels of these societies. Ultimately, it's a book about power, about uh, gaining power and retaining power, and um, and the psychology of power. Um, and giant worms. It's also about giant worms. So. Yeah, I gave this four stars. Uh, it does drag a bit. It's a long book. It's a solid sort of 500 pages. I think the second half is weaker than the first half. But if you're at all interested in science fiction, then you just you just have to read Dune. It's just one of those books. Uh, it was sunny and now it's not sunny. So I'm going to put the light on so the lighting is going to change. Uh, I filmed these things on my iPhone. Uh, I don't have like fancy lighting or anything which is probably why not many people watch my videos because they probably don't look great um but anyway it's getting dark so i'm gonna i'm gonna put the light on and it's probably gonna look terrible so next up i uh listened to skeleton crew by stephen king uh this is narrated by a variety of of different people including stephen king himself he does read one of these stories so some of the um the stories in skeleton crew um are i guess quite famous Stephen King story. So it opens with The Mist, uh, which I think is probably the longest. It's more like a novella. Um, this was adapted into a film, uh, a very good film by Frank Darabont, with a much bleaker ending than what you see in, in, the, in the written source. I don't know really what I got out of reading The Mist, because uh, the film version, the, the, the Frank Darabont film version, does adhere quite closely to the written version. There aren't too many changes. Where there were changes in the film version, I think they were for the better. Um, the other one I enjoyed was The Jaunt, which is a rare Stephen King sci-fi story. At least at this point in his career, he wasn't writing a lot of sci-fi. I don't know if he does these days, but um, The Jaunt was about um, a family that is going to travel to Mars using this kind of teleportation system called The Jaunt. Uh, and the kids are curious about how it works, and the dad decides to explain to them how it works, and there's this whole backstory um, about the jaunt and why people have to be rendered unconscious in order to use the jaunt. Uh, I gave, I think I gave this three stars, maybe two, but I think really my, I'm just not very objective about Stephen King at this point because I've, this is the 22nd or 23rd of his books that I've read in the last 18 months. I've been reading them in chronological order and I think I've just... I've just had enough of Stephen King for now, so yeah. Uh, I then listened to another audiobook, and this is Mike Duncan's The Storm Before the Storm, the beginning of the end of the Roman Republic. 
Now, Mike Duncan hosts a podcast. If you listen to podcasts uh, a lot, you're probably aware of Mike Duncan. At the moment, he's doing a, a series called Revolutions, which has been going for some years now. And he's actually onto the last season of this, uh, where he's uh, talking about the Russian Revolution. But prior to Revolutions, he had a series called The History of Rome, where he covers the history of Rome from its mythical beginnings through to the collapse of the Western Empire. And I listened to the whole thing in a few months, and I, then I listened to all of Revolutions in a few months. Over the course of like a year or so, I listened to everything that Mike Duncan has done, uh, and I think he's brilliant. Um, he he kind of rekindled my love of history and I owe quite a lot to him um, and so I was really keen to listen to his book he narrates it himself of course um, this this actually became a New York Times bestseller it did really well it is really fascinating it's about an era of Roman history that isn't hasn't been hasn't been covered quite as much because it's just before uh, Julius Caesar uh, and the actual collapse of the Roman Republic it's those sort of it's so kind of like a century, a century and a half before that. So this is after the fall of Carthage and Hannibal, but before Caesar. So how how did things get to the point where Caesar was able to do what he did, essentially? Uh, and this talks about how, how the, the groundwork was laid in those decades before. Uh, I really recommend it. It's only like 10 hours or so worth of audio. Uh, Mike Duncan reads this stuff really well because he's he's been you know podcasting for many many years now, um, and I think he's just one of the best uh, popular historians around. He's able to present to you well researched, well researched, serious history in a way that is really engaging. So highly recommend it. Then I read Providence uh, by Alan Moore, and I actually read the first volume, uh, which collects together the first four uh, of these comics. And I, I guess I kind of enjoyed it. I think it's an interesting world that he creates. So it's based on very heavily on Lovecraft. So Alan Moore researched Lovecraft very heavily, everything that Lovecraft wrote everything that has been written about Lovecraft. He went into great detail um, to understand the world of H.P. Lovecraft. Um, the problem with this particular um, series of comics is that uh, apparently they they are connected to other Lovecraftian works that Alan Moore has done. And you can't fully understand Providence if you haven't read those. So that kind of, when I read that, that kind of put me off. Saying that, I you know I did enjoy aspects of this. This is about this guy, uh, and he's a journalist in near New York in the early twentieth century, and he's gay, um, and this is about him um, having this 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 I guess what he perceives as being this dark secret at this time, and how that ties in with this dark reality around him. He's kind of discovering this hidden world, this underworld. Um, these secret societies, um, he's seeing things that he isn't sure whether they're hallucinations or not. And he um, essentially quits his job in order to learn more about this this underbelly to America. Um, it's interesting. Um, I'm probably not going to read the other two volumes in this just because I feel like I'm not getting the full story by reading these things alone. Um, but if you have read Alan Moore's other works, you have read the works that are connected to this, and you've read some H.P. Lovecraft, which I, I haven't actually done yet, um, then this is obviously essential reading. Next up, I read Dracula by Bram Stoker. I had intended to read this a few months ago. Um, I think it was part of the monster -a -thon, um, but I didn't get around to it. <clears throat> um, I'm glad I did read it. Uh, it's a bit of a slog. Dracula is a longer book than I'd expected. Um, it's not the story that you know. If you've seen, you know, many of the uh, adaptations of Dracula, um, like one of the things that really surprised me is that in Dracula, vampires can walk around in daylight. And they're fine. Uh, they generally don't. They generally sleep, they rest uh, during the day, they don't really have the same powers during the day as they do at night, but sunlight doesn't burn them in Dracula. So that was a surprise. Um, you probably know that um, it, the Dracula uh, 
book is presented in the forms of, of letters and diaries and, and, and so on, um, which is interesting. It's interesting because later in the book, these various different sources that we've been reading have to be compiled together by the characters in order to understand what is happening. Um, there's a lot about this that I haven't, I guess I haven't entirely processed yet. So the representation of women, um, many of the female characters have voices of their own because we're reading their diaries, uh, reading their letters. As, as just, as, just a, as a novel, as a book to read, um, it's, it's difficult to get through because the, 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 I guess the most famous sections in Castle Dracula are over in about 50 pages and this in my edition this was about over 300 pages so you're kind of done with that really quickly uh, and then the account of Dracula's voyage on the ship uh, to Whitby that is over um, in another sort of 50 pages that's that's done with so there are really large sections of this book that are about Van Helsing um, and his crew of vampire hunters trying to work out what is going on and having long conversations and, and praising the virtue of the women around them, um, it does get kind of tedious. But given that I'd read Let the Right One In just a few weeks before reading this, as, as a vampire book, Let the Right One In is just a much better read. But in order to understand, I guess, the origins of these tales, reading Dracula is important and there is much in it to be admired and there is much in it that, that fascinated me. Finally, um, I listened to Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, as read by Rosamund Pike on Audible. Oh, this was brilliant. Uh, I had no hesitation in giving this five stars. I think one of the main reasons for that is um, Rosamund Pike. Um, the way that she reads this, the way that she brings these characters to life is genius. Uh, and a shout out particularly for her take on Mr. Collins. Um, I won't try and recreate the way that she that she voices Mr. Collins, but it is just this brilliant combination of hilarious and cringeworthy at the same time. I mean, he's, you know, the material she's working with in itself is genius, but what she adds to that through her um, vocalizations is just brilliant. Uh, I'd never read Pride and Prejudice before, I'm ashamed to say, and I, I didn't know the plot in detail, so just reading this for the first time was brilliant but reading it in this form uh, I'm so glad that I did um, I thought it was funny I thought that it was poignant uh, I th it was infinitely clever and I mean what more can you say about Pride and Prejudice is now very dark in here I'm sorry about that I have been talking about Dracula and about vampire tales um, so I'm hoping this kind of spooky light adds a little ambiance to that um, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my videos uh, and I will see you guys soon.